In January 1568, French forces took Calais. England saw remaining possession of the European mainland. Although the territory was financially burdensome, it was an ideological loss. My thoughts and desires were always preaching the correct teachings of Christ's church to the people in 1555. Those who persisted in their agendas, that sedition, and false rumours have been nourished and maintained in the realm by the subtlety and malice of some evil disposed persons who took it upon themselves without sufficient authority to preach and interpret the word of God. Like all English monarchs before me, I understood that heresy was an infectious disease that had to be stamped out to ensure not only religious heterodoxy, but also political and social stability. Some, like Cranmer, Latimer and Ridley, were men of influence and high position, but the majority belonged to the lower orders. These last were dangerous. In the England I had inherited as monarch, heresy existed on an unprecedented scale. Many staunch Protestants remained in England and determined to lead the people astray, refusing to obey the laws of Parliament. Cardinal Reginald Pole knew that heretics could harm the ignorant multitudes as much by their deaths as ever they did alive. And so heretics were brought from prisons to hear their errors denounced before the multitudes. But John Fox and the other writers of England's history vowed 